My dear friend and patron Marianne mentioned wanting to paint chickadees. So what's unique about chickadees? What's unique about chickadees, to my mind, is they have kind of a weird shape. They have a tiny, slightly rounded beak, right? Then they have a very big head. Maybe that's why I like them. I have a big head and hats never fit me, women's hats. So I often start with a beak when I paint. And this is getting ready to be bigger than I intended, but that's okay. Just start with bigger paper. Then you look at the eye and you see that the bottom of the eye is coincides with the top of the beak, right? And then you kind of go for that throat. And then, okay, the distance between the eye, I made this, the eye is going to be smaller than this. But then what's unique about these birds is how long their head is beyond the eye. I'm using a gray that's a mix of all the scraps from the side of the pan of my winter light palette, which was a fun thing to do. So, there's this white here, so you want to paint around it, kind of a negative painting, if you will. And then, um, where the white ends, the photo I'm using is a chestnut-backed one, so it has brown on the back, but I'm not doing that just to keep things simple in terms of color. Well, it's still wet if you want to do some of those fancy things. Okay, so now we have this back, which, all right, let's do it brown, why not? It will help define. This is the back under the wings. Because this is coming out bigger than I thought, it might not fit in the paper, or at least not the tail, but that's okay. Then we have the shoulders here, where there's a beginning of wing of uh, feathers. Don't worry about the feathers so much. I mean, feathers can drive you crazy in watercolor, and people who do very detailed work need to worry about it, but I don't. And you always have a second layer if you want. So try to leave a little bit of white because that helps. And you can see the belly here, which will darken later. You see a little bit of the belly. And you see this size of the head is about, there's about two of those for the body, right? Just to make things proportionate. But as I mentioned, the tail's not going to fit. So I'm going to pretend that it's fanned out more than it is. So I'll make it wider. Because if it were fanned out, then it would be shorter. I think the belly has a bit of brown. And then we could use brown for the place where it's perched. All right, 
Then if we want to darken some spots, we can do it while it's still wet. I'm using a black that I appropriately call chickadee black. It's from my 12 Days of Christmas palette. And we want to put it in the rest of the head too because it is a black capped chickadee. I don't know if any of them are not black back, black capped. I thought that's what's unique about chickadees is the black cap. A little bit underneath of the and a little bit here and you can also use the black to start defining some of the feathers while it's still wet you don't have to worry too much about precision it just gives a sense that it's not a solid thing and a little bit of texture trying to grab very little paint it's the same gray that I used for the rest of it but just to give a sense of texture here rather than flat You could also do a little bit of sky. And since we're doing this in one pass, I'm pretty sure if we touch the sky with the, if we touch the bird with the sky, it will blend, which you may or may not want to do. So if you don't want any blend, just wait until the bird is dry. If you want to live dangerously, you could also like, just not touch it. The top of the beak is dry, so we're safe. The branch is kind of dry. Around here it's kind of dry. But a little bit of blending is not bad, I think, so I'm going to... If some of the bird kind of goes into the surrounding sky, it can have a nice effect as long as it doesn't lose its shape altogether, which it isn't because it's pretty dry already. In winter in Vermont, we keep the heat on. <laughs> so uh, paintings dry pretty fast. And then if you want to Make it a little bit more interesting, you can drop another color. So I'm putting some red just for fun. You could also drop green to suggest foliage. And here we go. This is, um, this paper is La Naquarelle. It's the back of a failed painting that I'm not going to show you. Uh, I've used, this is, is a, ba it's a mop brush, and this is a brush that, as far as I can tell, has been discontinued. It's my favorite, so I treasure it. Low Cornell, it's like a $6 brush, but I love it so much. Number six, ultra round. And here's a little chickadee indirect watercolor. I hope you'll try one. <laughs> 